What's up guys, it's Mr. Bringle and today we're going to talk about um, some of the story math problems for constant velocity and speed. So um, per instruction in class we will use a specific process for getting points for our problems here and um, the first point that you're going to get is for reading through the problem and underlining all of the, <clears throat> excuse me, underlining all of the um, values that have been given to you and then circling the thing that you're solving for and the purpose of this is to focus on um, reading and analyzing story problems and being able to pick out the things that are actually relevant for our problem so let's go ahead and read for reference we will use the front door of Westfield Middle School as position zero meters um, Ion's mom drops him and his Razor scooter off in front of the middle school at a position of 20 meters from the front door. Ion rides in a straight line to door number one at WHS, which is at position 825 meters relative to the front door of the middle school. It takes Ion 240 seconds for, uh, for him to make the trip. What was his average velocity? So we've read through it. There's kind of a lot there. Let's go back and dissect. Um, this one is one where it's actually really good to draw a diagram. So we notice uh, early on it says the middle school, WMS, is at zero meters. And then Ion is making a trip over to the high school. Okay, sorry for the not straight line here. And so the first thing it tells us is that Ion is dropped off in front of the middle school at a position of 20 meters from the front door. So it doesn't really matter where we put it, just somewhere over here, we'll call this 20 meters, and I'm gonna put an I for ion. That's where he starts. It then says he rides in a straight line to door number one at the high school, which is at a position 825 meters. The key here is it says relative to the front door of the middle school. So that 825 meters, which we'll just put down here, and put WHS is 825 meters from the middle school, not from where Ion started. It then says it takes Ion 240 seconds to make the trip, and then what was his average velocity? So I am literally going to give you guys a point <clears throat> for underlining the things that have been given to you and circling the thing that you're solving for. The way I look at that is it's a free point. So. Uh, just humor me and put that there. Your second free point that you get is for rewriting your knowns and unknowns to help us organize this problem. Okay, so the first thing that it gave me was 20 meters. And you really want to focus on your units of measurement. You want to memorize those and know which variable they go with. So when I see meters, I should immediately be thinking, okay, this is either a distance or a displacement, or it could be the initial position or the final position, because all of those things are measured in meters. Okay, when I see that it takes him 240 seconds, then I know, oh, seconds, that's a measurement of time. That's gonna be T, right? And that might seem simple for this first example, but as we get deeper into class and we have more variables and more units, it becomes more and more important. So we wanna start now. So I see 20 meters, um, that's this right here. So what exactly is that? Well, that's not the distance he traveled um, and it's not his displacement. But what that is, is where he started at. So that is going to be his initial position. We'll, we'll use X sub I for this. Uh, you could also use X sub zero or, or position null. Uh, but we'll use initial position here and we're gonna write in 20 meters. Now he ends over here at 825 meters, right? So his final position relative to the front door of the middle school, just like his initial position was relative to the front door of the middle school, is 825 meters. We already talked about the time. That's 240 seconds. And then we are solving for his average velocity, so V. Okay. So you get a point for doing the underlining and the circling. You get a point for writing out your known, and known variables and your unknown variable. The next thing you get a point for is writing out the equation that you're going to use. And so um, I don't have an equation sheet up on the screen, but you should have one. And we go look at our equations and we see there's basically five equations on the sheet for this unit and three of them have V in it, which is what we're solving for. So we need to focus on those. And then from that point, um, you might realize that all three of those equations with V, it's technically the same equation. It's just that for delta X displacement, you don't need to write this down, but delta X is equal to the final position 
minus the initial position of an object. So uh, we can always sub in x sub f and x sub i uh, like this for delta x. And so that's what's been done on the second equation down. And then the third one is rearranged to actually solve for the final position. Since we are solving for velocity, we want to use... Um, either the first or second version of the equation. And since we know the initial and final position, we should use that one that has those things in it. So we are going to use this equation that velocity is equal to final position minus initial position divided by time. You get a point for writing that down. So at this point, we have three points out of a total of six. So you have 50% of the points for this problem, which means that if you get the answer wrong, it's not a huge deal. We're more interested in teaching problem solving skills, um, the process for doing this, rather than just getting the right answer. So that's where the emphasis is, that's where you're getting most of your points, is actually setting up the problem and working it out. So now we can put numbers in. Velocity is equal to the final position of 825 meters minus the initial position of 20 meters Go ahead and um, subtract those, you'll get 805, and then divide that by 240 seconds. We ultimately find out that his average velocity is going to be 3.35 meters per second. Now, if, you're, if you were absent and you're doing this, um, you're watching this video to uh, make up this work, I would always encourage you to kind of stop the video after I um, show my work. You get that down and then actually put it into your calculator and make sure that you're getting the same answers, especially some of the problems that use like scientific notation and things like that or have multiple steps. Like make sure that you are getting the same answer on your calculator. Don't just write down what I write down. Okay. Um, the second example problem that we did in class was number two. And so this one is slightly different. It says, in the problem above, Ion is told he cannot cut through the grass by the, both of the school resource officers. So he proceeds to travel on the pavement and covers a total distance of 930 meters from where he starts to where he ends. The trip time is still 240 seconds. What is his average speed? So technically, you only need to underline the number and the unit of measurement um, to get your point. But when it tells us what it is, we might as well underline that too. And what I mean by that is over here, it tells us that the total distance is 930 meters. So I might as well put that together so I see, oh, okay, I'm just writing down D for distance. And the same thing here, it tells us the time is 240 seconds. So might as well. Okay. So we will write down our known and unknown values here. So the first one was the distance, the total distance of 930 meters. And the time is still 240 seconds. And then it says, what is his average speed? Uh, please note that for speed, um, sometimes people like I'm doing now will use S for speed, but um, technically the symbol is V. It just sometimes gets confusing with velocity, which is more like an italicized V. So often we just separate it like this um, and just use S and V for speed and velocity. Um, we can go ahead and plug our, or our numbers in here to get our answer. 930 meters is the distance divided by the time of 240 seconds. And ultimately, we will find that the average speed here is going to be 3.88 meters per second. Okay, so that one's a little bit easier because it actually just told us the distance that he traveled. It didn't give us an initial and a final position. Um, our last example is actually going to be number five. So skip ahead to the next page and look at this one here with me. This one um, is a little bit tricky and often tricky problems on our practice problems end up showing up later potentially as an extra credit problem or it might just be on the test. So um, just kind of keep, keep that in mind. Uh, it says, during an Apollo moon landing, reflecting panels were placed on the moon. This allowed Earth-based astronomers to shoot laser beams at the moon's surface to determine the distance. The reflected laser beam was observed 2.52 seconds after the laser pulse was sent. If the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, which it is, that's 300 million meters per second, 
uh, what is the distance between the astronomers and the moon. So this is another one where I think it's really beneficial to draw a diagram. I'm This is my satellite right here and um, it emits a laser beam, right, that travels this way, and it hits the moon. So this is my moon over here. It, it hits the reflecting panels on the moon, I should say. And then it bounces back, and the astronomers observe it back on Earth. Okay, so there's kind of a trick to this problem because it has given us um, a little bit of what I would call like false information. Okay, so the time that it gave us is the time for the laser beam to go to the moon and then also including the time to come back. So really what the deal is here is it takes 1.26 seconds, which is exactly half of 2.52, it takes half that time to go to the moon, and then it's going to take another 1.26 seconds to get back. So really what we want to be doing here is we want to use half of the time that it gave us and use 1.26 seconds. Because what would happen is if you end up using the 2.52 seconds as your time, you will end up calculating a distance that is twice as much as what we want. You would essentially calculate the distance to go to the moon plus the distance to come back. Now, if you do that, you can still get the question right by dividing your distance by two at the end. I just personally feel it's best to cut the time in half up front so that we don't accidentally forget to do it at the end. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then we've got speed of light here as three times 10 to the eight meters per second, okay? Um, so we'll wanna make sure we know how to use scientific notation on our calculators. And then ultimately here we are solving for distance. So for the equation, once again, we'll be using speed is equal to distance over time. Now, in terms of rearranging this equation. I do not mind if you put the numbers in the equation first and then rearrange it, or if you rearrange the equation with the variables, the symbols, the way it is right here. Either way works. Um, it's really whatever you're comfortable with. I'm gonna go ahead and plug the numbers in here. So we have three times 10 to the eight meters per second equal to the distance over the time, which is 1.26 seconds. So what you can see here is that we do need to multiply by 1.26 seconds over here to cancel, and we need to multiply by 1.26 seconds over here. So ultimately what's happening here is we have distance equal to speed, I was about to put V, speed multiplied by time, okay? So that's, that's what this is, right? We got T right here, we got speed right here, okay? So now all we have to do is multiply those two numbers together. And what you are going to find is that your answer comes out to be 3.78 times 10 to the eight meters. Um, alternatively, you could write that as three, we need to move decimals here, one, two, and then six zeros here. So three, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, this would be 378 million meters. Um, either way of presenting that would be okay, um, scientific notation or not. So this covers the three example problems that we did in the classroom together. Um, each day we will do two to three of these problems so that we get reps every single day. We want to practice these skills every day. We don't want to just work ahead and finish the whole packet in one day or two days. Um, I always liken it to um, playing a sport, like if you play football and you're a wide receiver, you're going to catch a bunch of footballs throughout the week leading up to the game on Friday. Um, but if we took all the reps that you get catching a football throughout the week and we just move those all to Monday and you do all of your practice on Monday and then you don't practice catching a football until Friday, it's probably not going to be um, ideal for the game, right? You want to get reps catching that ball every single day so that you're ready to do it when it's game time. It's the same thing for really all aspects of your life, but math, um, for sure, you want to get reps every day so that you're current on it, you're feeling good about it, and there hasn't been a big gap where you've forgotten some things. So thank you for sticking with me, and I hope you learned something today.